twenty thousand. Ah! Yeah! yeah. Ah! Look at my hat. Dow twenty thousand. Yeah. Let me take this off. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm celebrating like I'm sure a lot of people are celebrating today. And that's good. That's good. That's not a bad thing. But let me talk about this for a second. Let me talk about this. You know, back in the day when I was working on Wall Street, uh, I used to have a saying. And the saying was, buy the trucks. And what I meant by that was every time there was a big move in the market, you'd have media trucks lined up and down Wall Street. You know, you'd never see them, but when there was a big move, and usually it was like a market crash, you'd have the media trucks, they, they were from Broadway all the way down to Water Street on Wall Street, and the reporters would be out there interviewing people, what do you think, what's going on, you know, and I would always say buy the trucks, because when the trucks showed up, you knew that was, that was kind of a, a, a reflection of high, high anxiety and emotion, uh, you know, it was on all the news channels, and you wanted to fade that. You wanted to go against that. You always want to go against high emotion, okay? Now, I'm not down on Wall Street today, uh, but I would guess there's probably trucks down there. I don't know if they're lined up and down the street. I mean, maybe there's a website somewhere online on the Internet with a webcam that'll show you, but um, I'm pretty sure there are trucks down there, and, and that's probably a sign of, of high emotion. Let's face it, 20,000 this is a big, momentous mark. That's not to say it's going to last. Back in the 1970s, and I'm going to talk about the 1970s in a second because I think a lot of it applies to kind of the current environment. In 1972, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit 1,000 for the very first time. That was, at that time, you know, just as momentous an occasion as today's 20,000. 1,000, you know, after it hit that 1,000, it took, um, what, nine years for it to get back to 1,000. Didn't crash or anything, but it kind of meandered for a period of time during the 70s. For most of the 70s, we had inflation during the 70s, and we had a period of rapid and extraordinary rate increases by the Federal Reserve at the time. And again, that was fueling the inflation. We also had two oil embargoes, but I mean, the... Um, the rate hikes were, were also a very big factor in that. And, you know, as you know, I've been talking about these rate hikes as price setting, and I've been right. I mean, you see the inflation indicators going up. You see the dollar weak, and it hit a seven-week low yesterday. You see gold going up every time they raise the rate. So the Dow is at 20000 now, those of you who get my MMT Trader Report, you know, a couple of days ago, I sent out an email saying, hey, look, I see the possibility of a rally. Some of us are short. I'm short S&P futures. I own stocks, but I have an S&P short futures position on. Some of you I know have the SDS, which is the inverse S&P index uh, ETF. But I warned of this rally because bullish sentiment in the last week dropped down pretty low for the first time. It was actually... If you look at the AAII sentiment survey, that weekly survey that the um, American Association of Individual Investors puts out, bullish sentiment got down below its historical normal average for the first time since November 10th. And bearish sentiment shot up a lot too. And what I also know and what I've been talking about is that since the last three weeks, almost the last month, the fiscal flows, which had been negative year over year, they have flipped positive again. Not by a lot, but they have flipped positive again. So when, when, when I saw those things, when I saw the, the bearish sentiment building up, when I saw the positive fiscal flows, I said, hey, you know, you might want to protect yourself. I said, buy some SPY or QQQs. Some of you did. Some of you were not able to. That's okay. Let me just say that any position, every position is a good position if you know how to manage it. And of course, management comes down to self-management. And that's the part I want to talk about. Um, a lot of people probably buying into this today. There are a lot of people probably getting, you know, stopped out who are people who are short. This entire rally since November which I predicted, you know, I was long going into the election when everybody was selling. Let's, let's, you know, just lay everything out on the table here, okay? But this entire rally has been based on expectation. It's been based on expectation of a big Trump stimulus. And while that may happen, I'm not saying it can't, 
the first thing he's done so far, the first tangible thing that we have seen was a freeze in federal hi hiring. Now, that's not bullish. It's maybe not the, the most bearish thing in the world, but it's not bullish. That's the very first thing he did, all right? And we're all, he's also been talking about, and his people have been talking about big-time spending cuts. I talked about that guy, Mickey Mulvaney, yesterday, who's going to be Trump's budget director. That guy's a full-blown austerian, right? He wants aw austerity. He wants to cut, cut, cut. So this is all based on expectation, all based on expectation. And the one concrete thing that we have seen so far has been a freeze on federal hiring. All right, so there's that. Um, also what's interesting, I found interesting is that if you look at the futures curve, right? If you look at prices going out on these futures, con the deferred contracts, they are at a discount to the cash. Now, normally in a market that's inverted like that, the market itself is telling you that forward prices are going to weaken the forward, the, the index out in the future is going to weaken. Now, you, you wouldn't see that in an environment where it's first starting to get bullish. You would see uh, the curve slope positive where futures prices would be higher. So that's interesting. That's not, again, that's not a good timing device, but I'm just saying, you know, that futures market reflects dividends. It reflects, and, and it's interesting how, because normally you'd see a positive curve because you're earning dividends and, you're, and your earnings are growing out into the future, right? But under an inflationary environment, as I've been saying, Future earnings, the purchasing power of the of the that basket of earnings, that money is worth less. And by the way, if you are a value based investor as I am, you're finding it harder and harder to find cheap stocks, undervalued stock. They're just not out there. I went through a list yesterday. I sent some stuff out yesterday to MMT Trader subscribers, you know, but it's hard to dig them up. So there you have it. So what do we do? You know. I got some emails, people say, Mike, I'm really confused. I'm really confused. Being confused is normal because we don't all the time have enough information. All right. I mean, the market just, it gives us all the information we need to make money, but it doesn't give it to us, you know, all at once, like here. Sometimes we have to wait. I tell people, sometimes you have to wait. And, in, uh, um, Confusion, if that's the emotion you're feeling, confusion is another form of impatience, okay? It's like, I want to know right now everything, what's, what, you know, what's going to happen? We don't know. So when you don't know, you have to wait. A mature, rational, disciplined person with the proper mental game, will understand that they do not have enough information right now, so they wait. Does that mean bailing out of your position? No. No position is a bad position. Everything could be managed, but the market is making you wait, and you just have to wait. That's it. We will get the information. And even if the information is positive, saying that the rally is going to continue, we'll work our way out of it. We'll work our way out of it, all right? Um, so I wanted to, to make that point. It's very, very important to understand that if you're saying things like I'm confused, it's just another way of saying you're impatient. Information will be there. It, it always is, but it doesn't mean it's going to be there on your beck and call. Just like, you know, like, a, like a child who says, I want my toys right now. You got to wait. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. Down 20,000, yeah!